Hi everyone, my name's Dabidor, and today I'm gonna show you how to get the Bloodhound's Fang easily. I'll also show you how to get it up to plus 10 as quickly and easily as possible. This guide is pretty simple, but I'm orienting it towards beginners, so it's gonna be pretty comprehensive. Feel free to use the timestamps to skip around as needed. The first thing I did was buy three cracked pots and the crafting kit from Kale at the Church of Ella. After that, we're gonna head up to the Gatefront Ruins, where we're gonna talk to Melina and get the Spectral Steed Whistle to summon Torrent. We're also gonna open up this chest here and grab the Lord's Run's Greatsword, and then we're gonna grab the Map of Limgrave, and then head down into the cellar, where we're gonna grab the Storm Stomp Ash of War and the Whetstone Knife. After that, we're gonna head west of the Gatefront through the Stormgate. We're gonna head up to the Stormhill Shack. There's a bunch of things up in Stormhill that we need to grab, so I'm gonna mark the points of interest on the map. Here's the full picture, if you're following along. Along the way, there's a golden seed we're gonna grab. And then instead of immediately heading to the Stormhill Shack, we're gonna make a right over here and come to this circle of chairs where we're gonna grab a few smithing stones. Then we're gonna come up to the Stormhill Shack, grab the Sight of Grace, and grab the Stone Sword Key. We're gonna need two Stone Sword Keys by the end of this run, and I'll show you where to get both of them, but keep that in mind. After that, we head up the hill where this troll is, and we grab the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. And then we're going to follow the road to the east, towards the Warmaster's Shack. There's a few things in the area around the Warmaster's Shack that we need to grab. So first we head up the hill to the north, where we're going to kill this knight and grab the Golden Vow Ash of War from his corpse. Make sure you pick it up off of his body after he dies. And then while we're in the area, we're also going to come to this ruin that's right here. And if we sneak up on the scarab by going to the left, we can kill it and grab a Somber Smithing Stone 1. Then we're going to go back to the Warmaster Shack and head south of it to this region over here with a bunch of trolls running around. There's a statue here that we want to break for a few smithing stones inside, but we can't break it. However, the trolls can, so you're going to aggro a troll and then lead it over. Uh, I ended up getting two of them, so be careful. Run away right before they hit, and you see the statue breaks, and we're going to grab the smithing stones. And then I headed back up to the Warmaster Shack. Right next to the Warmaster Shack, there's a bunch of root resin, so there's three right here. You can grab the root resins and then rest at the site of grace, and the resins will respawn, and then you can grab them again. So that's how you farm root resin really easily. We're going to need a lot of root resin to make blood grease, which we're going to use on the Bloodhound's Fang later on. So I suggest you stock up on a bunch of it while you're here. After that, I went back to the Gatefront Ruins, and we're going to head to the northeast across the ravine. You can see that there's a ruin connecting the two sides of the ravine, so that's where we're going to go. There's a site of grace right next to the ruin. I didn't grab it here, but you can see it on the bottom left. So we're going to jump on top of the ruin, and then you can jump up onto the edge of the ravine there. This scarab drops another somber stone one. If you want it, just be careful because on death it will explode. And then we're going to head to the northeast up to the artist shack where there's another smithing stone we can grab and a site of grace. We're going to want to keep heading east towards that minor ur tree in the mistwood, but first we're going to stop by a graveyard up here and grab a few things. So you come over to the cliff just to the east of the shack, and then you just follow the cliff to the north. You'll come to a lower section of it, and then you can drop down again from there. And just to the north of it, there's a graveyard. There's a bunch of golden runes here, and you see in the corner, there's a recipe for the uh, sleep pots. So make sure you grab that, which I forgot to grab in this first clip here. And once we're done grave robbing, we're going to come over to the archway over here. And we're going to follow the road to the northeast, where we're going to come to the third church of America. In the third church, we can grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic, and there's also a sacred tier at this statue, which we can use to upgrade our healing flasks. Make sure you grab the Sight of Grace at the third church, and then we're going to follow the road to the south. We're going to grab the map of the Mistwood. This is the approximate area where the tree is, which we're going to stop by. And there's also, on the road, just to the west of the road, there's the Mistwood Ruins, which we need to go to as well. Be careful of all the giant bears that are in the area. Most of them are to the west of the road, so as long as you stay on the east side of the road, you should be fine. And then we're going to come over to the Erd Tree. At the base of it, you'll find two more Crystal Tears, which we're going to need. And then you just head to the west from the tree, and you'll find the Mistwood Ruins. You're going to hear a blithe howling at the tower on the top of it, so we're going to head back over to the Church of LA, where we're going to ask Kill about the howling in the Mistwood. You'll also meet Rena the Witch while you're here, talk to her, and she'll give you the Spirit Calling Bell, talk to her again, and she'll leave, and then you can talk to Kill. Ask him about the Howling in the Mistwood. He'll give you the Finger Snap Gesture. So you can equip that on your Gestures menu to the right. So hit Y or Triangle, then select it from the menu. And then you can activate it with A from here. 
you're gonna want to go back to the Mistwood Ruins, and at the base of the tower, you're gonna use the finger snap gesture to get Blythe's attention. He'll drop down, and you can talk to him. He's gonna tell you that he's looking for a guy named Darawil, who is the guy that drops the Bloodhound Fang, so we're gonna get Blythe to help us kill him. However, there's one or two more things we gotta do before that. So just to the south of the Minor Erd Tree, you can see there's a cliff here. If you come off of the road toward that cliff, there's a merchant here that'll sell you some smithing stones. You can also just follow the road south, and you'll see his message, which points you over to him. But we're gonna come and talk to him, because he sells a bunch of smithing stones. You're gonna wanna make sure you have at least 12 smithing stone ones, because we want to bring our Lord Sworn's Greatsword up to plus three. I had ten, so I bought two from him. After that, we're going to head to Fort Height at the south end of the Mistwood, so it's just directly to the south of us. There's a Site of Grace over here to the west of the fort, so make sure you grab this in case you die. We're going to head up into the fort. First, we're going to grab the Golden Seed that's just outside of it. Very nice. Then once you go inside the fort, there's a... Uh, be careful of the pumpkin head, don't get on by him like I did. There's a few blood roses here that you're going to want to pick up. We're going to farm more of them later, but it's nice to just grab them while we're here. And inside this little room, there's a cookbook that gives us the recipe for blood grease. Don't die. And then after that, you're going to head up to the top of the fort, climb up the tower, try not to get murdered by the knight. And at the chest at the top of the tower, we're going to grab the left half of the Dectus Medallion, which we're going to need to get up to the Altus Plateau later. Optionally, you can also kill the knight here, and he will drop the Bloody Slash Ash of War, which is really strong, but it's not necessary for this guide. Once that's done, there's one more little graveyard over here. You can see all these little squares on the map, so we're going to come and loot that for the Golden Runes, and then we're going to come up to the tree line over here. You can see on the map where the tree line ends, like here. So at the cliff on the west side of that, there's a spirit spring that we're going to use to go up the cliff. At the graveyard, grab all the golden runes. Be careful of the wolves that are here. There's also a few more uh, just to the north of it along the way to the spirit spring that we're going to. And then at the cliff here, there's a spirit spring. Jump up it. There's another graveyard at the top of this. So loot these things too. And then you're going to head to the southwest toward the lake where there's a site of grace next to the Forlorn Hound Everjail, where we can find Darawell. This gray circular thing is the Everjail, and you can see the grace is just to the north of it at the base of the path that's there. Before we go in, I'm going to head back over to the Warmaster Shack with some of the runes that we grabbed, and I'm going to buy the Impaling Thrust Ash of War from him for a thousand runes. We're going to put Impaling Thrust on that great sword, which is going to be really effective against Darawell. Make sure you rest at a Site of Grace and use the Golden Seeds and the Sacred Tear that we picked up to upgrade your flasks. You're also going to want to go to your Ashes of War, put Impaling Thrust on the Greatsword, and then you're going to want to put Golden Vow on another weapon. I don't do that until a minute from now. We're also going to mix up our Wondrous Physic. I'm going to use the Strength Knot Crystal Tear to increase the damage I do with the Lord's Run's Greatsword. And you can use the Spike Tear or the Green Spill Tear. They're both fine. Um, Blythe is going to do most of the work for us in killing Darawell right now anyway. We're also going to head back to the Church of LA, and we're going to want to use those smithing stones to upgrade the Greatsword. So, sell some golden runes to Kale so you can afford to upgrade it. You can only bring it up to plus three here, but we only had the smithing stones to bring it up to plus three, so it doesn't matter. And like I said, make sure you put Golden Vow on one of your weapons. Doesn't matter which weapon you put it on, I just have the club, so that's what I put it on. Golden Vow is a buff that increases your damage and your damage resistance for, I think it's 80 seconds. Uh, so that's really good. And now it's time to go and murder Darawil, so head back to the Aggie LA South side of Grace. If you had talked to Blythe, then you'll see his summon sign when you enter the Everjail, so you can summon him if you want. I'm gonna do it because why not? Uh, he's really strong. He has a Colossal Sword, so he does a fuckload of poise damage, so it's gonna be really easy to break Darawil's stance and not let him uh, attack us back. So cast Golden Vow on yourself and Darawell, and drink the Physic, and then you can just hit Darawell with Impaling Thrusts, or just back off and let Blythe do all the work. Uh, yeah, he's pretty good. The Impaling Thrust does a ton of damage because Darawell's weak to Pierce damage, and Impaling Thrust on the Greatsword also does a ton of Poise damage, so we keep getting Stance Breaks on him, uh, in addition to Blythe's Colossal Sword also doing a ton of Poise damage. And just like that, Darawell is dead, and we have the Bloodhound's Fang. Afterwards, you'll automatically leave the Everjail, and Blythe will be standing here, so talk to him. He will give you a Somber Stone 2 as a reward, so that's cool. We can use that to upgrade the Fang. And if you talk to him again, he'll tell you to go find a guy named EG. We'll do that later. The Bloodhound's Fang requires 18 Strength and 17 Dex to wield, so my character can't use it yet, but we're going to address that in a little bit. Head back to the church and upgrade it to plus 2. Um, a plus 2 Somber weapon is equivalent to, I think, a plus 6 or a plus 7 
regular weapon, so it's really strong now. If you want runes to level up, you can sell some of those golden runes to Kale and level up a bit, but I didn't do that because we're gonna get a few free levels and we're gonna get a whole bunch of runes for free anyway. Uh, so head back to the Third Church of America and the pond just to the north of it. There's a teleporter that'll take us over to the Dragon Barrow. So this is a high level area. Be careful not to get owned by the enemies here. Uh, if you're low level, they'll probably one shot you, but you can see we traveled a pretty significant distance. We're gonna head directly to the south toward that minor Erd tree over there. Go around the Black Blade Kindred because it will murder you. Along the way, you're going to follow the road and there's a golden seed, so make sure you grab that. There's also a static grace next to this big bridge here. Make sure you grab that in case this dragon kills you. I like to just run past it. Usually it won't hit you as long as you go around the side of it. And then you keep heading south, come to the Erd Tree, go around behind it, and there's a spirit spring that'll take you to the top of the cliff up here. On your left, you can see Fort Faroth. That's where we're going. Grab the Sight of Grace outside of it, because we're going to need to come back here. So, there's a bunch of high-level bats in here that can do a ton of damage if they hit you, but if you're quick, you can just sprint past them all and climb up the ladder. They can't fly you up the ladder. Grab the second half of the Dectus Medallion, and then we're going to head further into the fort over here. You can see the far hole that has a ladder in it. Drop down here. Be careful of this rat that can one-shot you. There's a Golden Rune 12 here. That's worth 7,500 runes, so grab that. Then jump across to this semi-secret area. Be careful of the even bigger rat that's in here. And then drop down where we're going to grab Retagon Sword Seal, which is a really nice talisman. I'll explain in a second. Uh, you probably want to make sure you come in here without any runes on your person. I just used a Memory of Grace to get out because there's no way I'm going to be able to kill uh, the rats without getting one-shotted by them. Uh, so don't bring any runes in there with you. But Retagon Sword Seal gives you 20 free levels. Uh, it gives you 5 points into Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity. So that's really nice to have. And then, so, we only need to have uh, 13 strength and 12 dex in addition to the sword seal to be able to wield the Bloodhound's Fang. So, I just brought my dex up to 12. I didn't put any points into strength because if you two-hand a weapon, that increases your effective strength by 50%. So, you can two-hand the Bloodhound's Fang with only 12 strength, and that'll give you an effective strength of 18. So, you see, I hold down Y or triangle, and I hit R1, and that lets me two-hand the weapon in my right hand, and so I meet the strength requirement for the Fang. So now we've acquired the Bloodhound's Fang, and we can wield it, and now it's time to go upgrade it. Head back to the Stormhill Shack and follow the road to the north to the Broken Bridge, and then there's a path to the west of the bridge that takes you around the cliff, around Stormvale to Lyrnia. So here's the broken end of the bridge, drop down to the lower path here, and then you can see... There's a path on the side of the cliff there that will take us to where we need to go, into the Urnia. At the end of that path, there is the lake-facing cliff side of grace. Grab that. We're going to stop by the Church of Iruth for the Sacred Tear to upgrade our flasks, and then we're going to follow the road to the west and then north to go grab the map. So here's your Sacred Tear, and then come out and head to the west, follow the path down and through a camp, and that takes you over here to the site of grace and a merchant. Talk to the merchant. You're going to want to buy the lantern from him for 1,800 runes uh, because we're going to need it later. There's a dark area we're going to go to. And then we're going to follow the sunken road to the north and grab the map. Try to lure these guys away from the map before uh, you go to grab the map because you saw there, they do a lot of damage and they can stun lock you and knock you off of torrent and then just kill you while you're on the ground. Anyway, keep heading north. There's a site of grace by the last car runes that we're going to want to grab. Try not to get owned after resting at the Site of Grace by the Wraith Callers. Anyway, so we're going to head to the gazebo in the middle of the ruins. You can see that circular gazebo right there. Uh, there's a teleporter here that will take us to the South Ray Lucaria Gate. So that's nice because it just saves us a bunch of walking. Once you get to the gate, make sure you grab the Site of Grace that you see up there. If you check your map, you'll see we traveled a pretty significant distance. And we can also see the North Lyurnia map on our unfinished map. So we're going to make sure we grab that. Uh, so if you come from the south gate, if you head south, there's like a raised part of the gate town. Um, this is like a bridge that's broken, so you can't go and just follow the road directly to it. Instead, there's a staircase that's going to take you down to the lake level. Uh, just to the south of the staircase, there is a golden seed that we're going to grab. Uh, so I'll show you the location of that in a second. So here's the staircase, and then just south of it, there is a golden seed. After that, go and grab the map. And there's also a set of grace right next to it. We're going to come back here later, but first I want to go and grab the final map of Lyurnia. 
We're gonna take another teleporter located on this gazebo just to the north of the gate town. You can also see it's just to the northeast of the south way of the Karia gate. So head over to this gazebo, take the teleporter. This brings us to the northwestern end of Leonia, conveniently right next to the map. So grab that bad boy. We can now see the entire area. Just to the south of the map, there's a site of graves that we're going to grab. And to the north of it, there's ruins that we need to get to the other side of. Also, while we're in the area, we're going to grab a few more golden runes. So if you head toward the lake, you can see these balloons that have marionette soldiers. If you hit them with something like a throwing dagger, a spell, um, you know, a, a bow and arrow. If you hit the balloon, then it pops and it gives you a golden rune 6. The balloons don't respawn, so you can only get these runes once, but they're nice to pick up. They're worth, I think, 2,000 each. There's also a graveyard on the lake here, as I just showed on the map. Uh, there's a whole bunch of wraith callers that are going to spawn here. Um, I recommend you actually grab these golden runes on foot instead of on torrent, because the wraith callers can uh, easily stun lock you and knock you off of torrent, uh, and then you're going to die. But yeah, so we got a pretty nice haul of golden runes, so that's good. And then after that, we head back up to the King's Realm Ruins, go through them. At the north end of it, there's an illusory wall, so hit that bad boy. Grab the Sight of Grace and talk to EG. EG is a blacksmith who can upgrade your weapons for you all the way up to max level, if you have the smithing stones for it. And he also sells infinite Somberstone 1s and 2s, and 3 each of 3s and 4s. Also, if you exhaust his dialogue, we get the option to tell him that Blythe sent us to him, so tell him that. And afterward, he will now sell the Carrion Filigree Crest, which is a talisman that reduces the amount of FP that your Ashes of War use, uh, so that's just nice to have. I didn't buy it for this guide, but it's good to get. Anyway, so we're going to buy one each of his Somberstone 3s and 4s, so that's going to cost you 10,000 runes, and we're going to use that to upgrade the Bloodhound's Fang up to plus 4, which is going to cost you, I think it's another like 4,000, something like that. Yeah. So, 14,000 runes total, which we can easily afford using the golden runes that we grabbed. So now we have the equivalent of like a plus 8 or plus 9 weapon, uh, so that's pretty good. After that, we're going to head back to the Academy Gate Town, and there's a few more points of interest we want to stop at. So first is that ruin and the Rose Church there. We're also going to come over to the Boil Prawn Shack. You can make out the outline of the building on the map here, so we're going to stop by that. There's also an island just to the southwest where we're going to go, and there's this gazebo here with the telescope next to it. Of where we need to go and do a quest line for an NPC. So our first stop is at the ruins over here. We're going to grab this site of grace called the Fallen Ruins of the Lake. This is the closest site of grace to the Rose Church. We want to come over to the Rose Church because we can farm blood roses here, which we're going to use to craft blood grease to put on the Bloodhound's Fang and uh, make it do a ton of bleed buildup. While we're here, you can also come across the other side of the church and there's a scarab you can kill. So there's two scarabs here. The one that's closest to the church is red. That one just refills your health flasks. You want to kill the yellow one that's a bit further away. When you kill this guy, he drops the Blood Flame Blade incantation, which allows you to buff the Bloodhound's Fang uh, with Blood Flame for, uh, I think, like 40 seconds or something like that. Um, I prefer Blood Grease, though, so it's really up to personal choice, um, especially if you want to be more of like a Faith Arcane build. Uh, but inside the Rose Church, there are eight Blood Roses you can grab. Then you can run back to that site of grace and rest at it and that will cause the blood roses to respawn and you can use that to farm blood roses to make infinite uh, blood grease. And of course you also need root resin which we can get at the war master's shack as I showed earlier. So by default the bloodhound's fang does 55 bleed buildup on hit and when you put blood grease on a weapon that adds 30 bleed buildup to it. So this thing is going to do 85 bleed buildup on hit which is not bad, not bad at all especially this early in the game. Uh, so that's pretty good. It's going to be really easy to make enemies bleed out. Alternatively, if you rest at a grace and go to Memorize Spell, you can equip Blood Flame Blade. It requires 12 Faith and 10 Arcane. And then you can use the Sacred Seal in your left hand to cast Blood Flame Blade and buff the Bloodhound's Fang with it. I'll explain why I like Blood Grease more uh, down in the description, but um, the gist of it is that Blood Flame Blade hits um, take time to build up bleed, and they don't stack with themselves. So a hit with the Blood Flame Blade causes 40 bleed buildup over the course of 2 seconds, but every time you hit the enemy, that timer resets. Versus with Blood Grease, where it just adds an extra 30 bleed every time you hit them. 
so that's why I like Blood Grease better. Anyway, so we headed over to the Boil Prawn Shack and grabbed the set of Grace there, and then just to the southwest of it, there's this little island that has the Dex Crystal tier on it, so grab that. Uh, the Bloodhound's Fang scales best with Dex, so we're gonna want to put that in our Physic to increase our damage. We also headed over to the little island next to the gazebo with the telescope, where we grab the Scenic Isle set of Grace. At the gazebo, we're gonna talk to Raya and do a request line. She wants us to get a necklace back from the guy at the Boil Prawn Shack, so we're gonna fast travel back over there and talk to him. He will sell it to you for 1,000 runes, so purchase it, and then you can fast travel back to the Scenic Isle site of Grace and head over to Raya and give her the necklace. She will give you the Volcano Manor invitation, which we're gonna use to get to the Volcano Manor from the Altus Plateau. To get to the Altus Plateau, we're going to head back over to the road to the manor, where we met Eiji. We're going to go north to carry a manor. We're going to grab a site of grace at the main gate, but we're not actually going inside. Instead, we're going to head to the east of the main gate, and where the ravine is, there's a big rock that'll take us across to the other side of the ravine, and we're going to follow the path up through the Bellum Church and onto the Bellum Highway, where we can then go to the Grand Lift of Dectus to get up to the Altus Plateau. When you're heading up to the manor, you're going to get shot at by these magical arrows, but they're super easy to dodge, so you shouldn't have any trouble with them. Grab the Sight of Grace, and then we're going to head around the corner to the east. There's some pretty good stuff in Carrier Manor, so you might want to check it out while you're here, but it's not relevant to this guide, so I didn't. Uh, you're going to pass by this little pond, and there's an invisible scarab running around. I tried to hit it with throwing daggers, but I missed it. Um, it dropped a nice Ash of War that's not necessary for this guide, but, uh, you know, you might want to pick it up while you're there. Anyway, so... Go across the rock, head up the path to the Bellum Church, grab the Sacred Tear inside the Bellum Church, and then when we head up the Bellum Highway, instead of going on the actual road, we're going to follow the cliff on the north side of it and stay close to the cliff. If you go onto the road itself, then there's a bunch of trebuchets up here that are going to shoot at you, so you want to stay close to the cliff or they can't shoot you. Before you take the Grand Lift of Dectus to go up to Altus, um, you should consider the fact that a couple things change down in the lower half of the map. Um, in particular, the main thing that changes is Red Main Castle will go into Radon Festival mode when you go up to the Altus Plateau. So the Radon Festival mode locks a bunch of doors in the castle, and you can't exit the festival mode until you kill Radon himself. And that locks you out of getting a couple items until you kill Radon. So keep that in mind. Anyway. Take the Grand Lift to Dexus up to the Altus Plateau, you'll be greeted by Raya. Instead of talking to her, we're first going to come to the north and grab the Set of Grace up here, because we're going to need to come back to the Altus Plateau later, and then we're going to talk to Raya, and she will take us to the Volcano Manor. Once we're inside the Volcano Manor, we're going to grab the Set of Grace and then talk to Tanith. She'll give us the Drawing Room Key, which we're going to use to access the main areas of the Volcano Manor, then go into the hallway and grab the first door on the right. There's an illusory wall in the corner. You can dispel it with a roll, activate your lantern because it's really dark in here, and then we're going to run past the snails through the dungeon. You're going to pass by a Bloodhound Knight on your left here. He won't aggro you until you get really close to him, so you don't have to worry about sneaking past him. Uh, but right after him, there's a Sight of Grace. I recommend killing the Bloodhound Knight because he drops the Bloodhound's Claws, um, which has the Bloodhound's Step Ash of War on it by default, but you're going to see in a minute it's helpful for the next area. He's pretty weak, so he shouldn't give you too much trouble. Just cast Golden Vow, drink the Physic, put Blood Grease on the Fang, and then you're going to hit him with a Charged R2, and then hit him with an L2 from the uh, Ash of War. And then you can do another R2 to hit him with the follow-up. And then after that, it's just one more hit to kill him, so just don't get owned. If you die, there's a set of Grace right here anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, just try again. But yeah, so he drops the Bloodhound Claws. After that, we're going to open the door in the chapel, and that takes us out into the prison town. We need to go up to the temple up there. We're going to activate this bridge and raise it for a shortcut uh, in a little bit. So inside the prison town, there is a bunch of loot and stuff to explore, um, but we're going to take a shortcut to get to the temple real fast. So you can drop down onto this little roof here, and then there's this little cliff you can drop down to. You might take some fall damage, but it shouldn't kill you as long as you land on the upper parts of it. Then you can drop down to the buildings in the lava here, and this is where you're going to want to use the Bloodhound Claws to grab a Bloodhound Step. Uh, be careful of these commoners, because this guy fucking murdered me here. Um, so, you know, be careful. You might want to kill that guy before you come over here. Uh, but anyway, jump down into the lava. It slows you down a lot and does damage over time. But if you use Bloodhound Step, you move through it a lot faster. Um, just keep an eye on your health and make sure you heal. Obviously, it also helps if you raised your Vigor beforehand. At this point, I hadn't leveled up my Vigor at all, so that's why I have so little health. Uh, but yeah, so make sure you have a decent amount of Vigor. 
Once you get to the shoreline, you're going to head to the west and come up onto this roof over here where there's a somber stone 6, which we're going to use to upgrade the fang. This next little bit here isn't necessary for the guide, but I thought I'd show it because uh, why not while we're here. So if you climb up this ladder, you'll see this door. You can't open it from this side. But if you run up against this wall and hold down B to start sprinting, you can do a sprint jump to this ledge over here. So line yourself up at the corner, line your head up with the pillar thing in the middle of it, and then just sprint jump across. It's a pretty easy jump to make, and you don't take damage if you miss it. And then there's a side of grace here, and you can open the door from the other side. So that's a nice little shortcut just to get to the other end of the prison town. But anyway, head to the east and go up the stairs towards the temple. There's a man serpent up here that has a whip, and he does a fuckload of damage. So I tried to sneak past him, but these commoners came up behind me. Um, so you're gonna see in a second that I'm about to get owned a little bit here. Uh, yeah. I tried throwing a throwing dagger to distract the man serpent uh, with the sound of the dagger. And then I was going to run past him to the elevator, but it, it didn't work. Uh, but yeah, so I just used Bloodhound Step to get past him, and then just take the elevator up. Uh, try not to get knocked into the lava behind you. Before we go up the steps, we're going to head around to the right here, where there's a corpse with a Somber Stone 5. So we're going to use that to bring the Bloodhound's Fang up to plus 5 and then plus 6. And then instead of going into the temple, you want to come over to the bridge, activate the lever, and this is a shortcut that takes you back to the prison town church, Grace. Uh, so that's the closest grace to the Godskin Noble fight. Make sure you go back and upgrade the Bloodhound Fang. Now we need to do a little prep for the Godskin Noble fight, so we're going to head back over to the Scenic Isle in Laernia, and we're going to head to the west to this gazebo. You see there's the enormous plateau that you can't get on top of. It's just to the north of that. This is called the Folly on the Lake. This is probably the best spot in the game to farm mushrooms, which we need for sleep pots. So just to the north of the Site of Grace, there's two mushrooms here. And then if you head to the west around the corner, there's this big rock with four more mushrooms underneath it. So you can grab all those mushrooms, then run back to the grace, rest at it, and the mushrooms respawn. And that's how you can farm, you know, tons and tons of mushrooms. We're also going to head underneath the plateau and follow the poison swamp to the west. In this area, there's a whole bunch of train of lilies. Unfortunately, these plants don't respawn, so you're going to need to be conservative with your lilies. It should only take like three or four of them to kill the godskin noble, as you're going to see in a minute. Um, so this should be more than enough, but if you need to farm them or find more of them, uh, you can look up a guide on how to find them. I also wanted to level up a bunch because we specifically need Vigor and Dex. So, uh, I came over to Grail in the Dragon Barrow and I'm going to kill her uh, as a rune farm. I have an entire guide about this if you want to check that out. Uh, this is a really nice rune farm for the early game, but essentially you use a bleed weapon with blood grease on it. And uh, as you hit her, it procs bleeds on her. Once her health gets low enough, you want to get on Torrent and hit her slowly so your stamina regenerates. As soon as she moves when she dies, you want to sprint back to the Site of Grace and rest at it quick. And if you do it right, then she'll respawn. Normally she doesn't respawn, um, but if you do this glitch, then she respawns and you can farm infinite runes from her. Uh, she drops 50,000 at a time. But anyway, so I use those runes and I put a bunch of points into Vigor so I don't get one-shotted by the Noble. And then I put the rest of my points into Dex because that's what the Bloodhound's Fang scales with. I'm also going to remix the Wondrous Physics. So we're going to swap out the Strength tier to the Dex tier because at this point we shouldn't need the Strength. Uh, and the Dex will give us a bunch of extra damage on the Fang. And then you're going to want to use the Spiked Crack tier. Alternatively, you can use the Green Spill tier, uh, which may make doing charged attacks against the Noble easier. Uh, but I like the spike tier for the uh, charge attack damage. We're also going to want to craft a bunch of sleep pots. I only had three cracked pots, which are the ones we bought from Kale. If you need more, then there's a couple more you can pick up really easily. So just to the north of the Church of LA, there's the Groveside Cave, and that has one cracked pot you can pick up. There's also a merchant to the east of the Warmaster's Shack, so go across the bridge and he's right there. Uh, he sells a cracked pot, I believe. And then if you head down to the Weeping Peninsula, there's a merchant along the road at the Castlemore Rampart that I believe also sells a cracked pot. However, three sleep pots was enough for me, uh, as you're about to see, and I think it'll probably be fine for you too. But you can grab more cracked pots if you need the extra advantage. You're also going to want to make sure you have blood grease equipped so you can easily put it on the fang. And you're going to want to have sleep pots on your hotbar so you can easily throw them. If this is your first time starting this fight, then you can walk a certain distance into the church before the noble spawns. Uh, if you die and retry it, then you walk through a fog wall and the noble is already aggroed on you. So you're going to have to buff outside of the fog wall, but it should be fine either way. 
So run in, dodge whatever attack he does at you, and then you can free aim a sleep pot at his feet, and one sleep pot will be enough to put him to sleep. He stays asleep for 60 seconds, so you have plenty of time to cast your buffs. Make sure you two-hand the Bloodhound's Fang and put Blood Grease on it. Hit him with two charged R2s while he's asleep, and then a tap R2 will break his stance, and then you can get the repost on him. Now he's below 50% health, so he'll do his phase transition, so hit him with another sleep pot, and that'll instantly put him to sleep. And then it's the same thing, hit him with two charged R2s. You don't want to use the Ash of War, use the R2s because they do more poise damage. Then you want to hit him with another tap R2, and hit him with the repost, and he's dead. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was significantly easier than I was expecting it to be, so I doubt that you're gonna have much trouble with this, uh, and yeah. Now with the Godskin Noble dead, we just have to run through the second half of the manor to get the Somberstone 7. This is the part that requires two Stone Sword keys, so make sure you have at least one. There's another one in this area that I'll show you where to pick up in a second. Uh, so make sure you do that. So once you get to this bridge thing over here, you're gonna want to jump off on the right side where the, uh, scarab is. And then if you come around the left here, you can jump in through this window into this room here, and there is a corpse that has a stone sword key on it. So there's one that you can grab. Uh, so you just need one more from outside of the manor. And then as you can see, there's a ladder that takes us back out to where we need to go. If you want to get past this guy really easily, just stay close to the pillar on the right. Uh, he won't hit you if you're like right up against the pillar, so do that. And then you're going to pass through this big room. You can go to right card through that outside door there, but that's not relevant to us right now, so we're not going to do that. Use the stone sword keys to go into the sex dungeon. Instead of jumping onto the cages, you're going to come to your right, stand on top of the candle, and line your head up with the archway there. And then all you got to do is walk forward, and you'll end up on this lower uh, platform here. And then it's just a quick run through this side area. And we did this specifically to grab the dagger talisman. Um, just while we're in the area, I wanted to show you how to get it, because it's not hard to do. Anyway, so now we want to go down to the bottom floor of the sex dungeon, so head down the cages. You're going to want to go to the west, so before you drop down to the lower area, make sure you check out which direction is to your west, because that's where we need to go to get the somber stone. And then we're also going to go to the other side of the room uh, to take a shortcut back to the drawing room. Uh, but first, we definitely want to head west, come up behind the virgin abductor, and there is a somber stone 7 on the corpse right here. And then you can run back through this area, uh, and if you head into the fireplace room, there's an Ash of War, and there's a shortcut back to the drawing room with Tanith. After that, we're going to head back to Fort Faroth, and we're going to head toward the Divine Tower of Kaled. So if you look on your map, you'll see the road. It leads you up to a map over here, and the tower is just to the north of the map. So you can use that as a reference to where we're going to go. Grab the map of the Dragon Barrel while you're here, then head north. You'll see on one of these roots here, there is a Scarab, so we're going to kill this bad boy. He explodes on death, so be careful of that. But he drops a Somber Stone 8, and then you're going to head to the east and come around the corner onto this lower area down here. And there is a Circle of Chairs with a Somber Stone 9 in it. So now, with the 7, 8, and 9 we just picked up, we're going to upgrade the Bloodhound's Fang. And it's very strong now. This only took me about two hours to do, so I'd say that's making pretty good time if you want to have a very strong weapon for your playthrough. Uh, keep in mind that the Fang scales with a C in strength and a B in dex. So you want to bring your dex up to, I think the soft cap is like 60 or 80 uh, before you start putting points into strength. Uh, you're going to get the most damage out of putting points into dex. So make sure you do that. In my case, with 38 decks, after using my buffs, uh, I'm getting like 570 AR, so that's pretty good, and like 15 strength. So now we want to get the Somber Stone 10, so that we can bring the Fang up to plus 10. Uh, so we're going to do Vari's quest line. The first thing he wants you to do is kill a demigod, so in my case, I came to Stormville, and I'm going to kill a Godric. In order to get to Godric, we need to kill Margit, uh, but fortunately, we have a plus 9 Bloodhound Fang, so that shouldn't be difficult at all, as you're about to see. So yeah, as you see, that was pretty easy. It also helps if you bring up your Vigor to 40, by the way, so make sure you do that. And then you're going to run through Stormvale. Uh, I'm not going to show a full walkthrough because it's a lengthy dungeon. Uh, but go through Stormvale and get to Godric. And same thing, he also shouldn't be too difficult.
So there you go. Once he's dead, you need to go to the round table hold and talk to Enya and the two fingers. So make sure you do that. And then we're going to head over to the Rose Church where we're going to meet Vare and he will give us the festering bloody fingers and ask us to uh, invade some people. So you don't actually have to invade people. You can if you want, but uh, especially if you're a low level with a plus nine weapon, you're not going to find anyone to invade. Um, so instead, I went over to the Altus Plateau uh, and just here's a, a little showcase of this thing's power. It's really strong, so, you know, that's nice. But anyway, uh, so in the Altus Plateau, you can come to the Ride the Blood Ruins. So here's the site of grace that we grab right next to the Grand Lift of Dectus. If you follow the road to the northeast, you'll come to the Altus Highway Junction at the fork in the road. And then if you follow the north fork, the map should be right around there. Follow the north road and that'll take you over to this bridge. There's a site of grace and a teleporter here. And then the teleporter takes you across to the other side of the bridge. And then you can head to the north and then come around to the left to these tombstones on the cliff here. You can use those to safely go down the cliff, and then you just gotta follow the road to the south, and that takes you to the Writhe Blood Ruins. Be careful not to get murdered by the dogs that are here, because uh, these dogs hit hard as hell, but so do you. Uh, inside this first building, there is a invasion sign that we're gonna use to invade Magnus the Beast Claw. So we need to kill him, and that counts as doing three invasions for Vari's questline. Um, so if you run away from him, he should uh, give you enough space to let you cast your buffs and stuff like that. And then uh, this is a case where using the Ash of War on the Fang is really useful because he'll dodge the first part of it, but not the second part. Uh, so that makes you really strong. So that's an L2 and then an R2 to do the follow-up. Uh, and just three-shot him. Shouldn't be a problem. Upon death, you get a couple items from him and you're going to head back to the Rose Church and Vare will give you the Lord of Blood's favor. Vare wants us to soak the Lord of Blood's favor in a Maiden's blood, so we need to find a Maiden whose blood we can use. There's a couple spots where we can do that, but I think the simplest one is at the Four Belfries in Liurnia. So as you can see, this is on the west side of the lakes. Uh, you can head back to EG and then just follow the road south. Uh, you'll come to like an encampment that you have to go through on the road, um, and then you can head through it and to the east, and it's on top of that big structure there. You can't miss it. Uh, but yeah, so just follow the road up to the four belfries. Be careful not to get murdered by the troll knights along the way. And at the top belfry, there is a site of grace, and there's a chest that has an imbued stone sword key in it. Um, there are three you can find in total. Uh, if you used this one already, then you can look up where the other two are. Um, they're fairly simple to get. Uh, but you're going to want to use one of them to come to the Precipice of Anticipation. So look for the message that says Precipice of Anticipation. And then you can activate the teleporter using the key. And that takes you back to the Chapel of Anticipation at the start of the game. So we need to kill the Graphic Scion that's here. Um, you're going to see me struggle in this fight a little bit because I don't actually know this thing's moveset. Um, I always like two-shot this thing with whatever weapon I use. So... Uh, I don't ever actually learn them, uh, but you know, just make sure you have decent vigor, and with the plus 9 fang, uh, you really shouldn't have too much trouble killing this guy. So that wasn't so bad. And then after that, we're going to head back up to the chapel where we spawned in at the very beginning of the game. And we're going to find our Finger Maiden's corpse. You'll have the option to dye the cloth with the Maiden's blood. That'll give you the blood-soaked Lord of Blood's favor. Bring that back to Vare, and he will give you the bloody finger, which you can use to invade. Uh, and then if you talk to him again, he will give you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. And you can go into your inventory and use that. And that will take you to Mogwin Palace. Once you're inside Mogwin Palace, you're going to head up the steps. We're going all the way up to the top of the mausoleum, uh, just near where Moog himself is. This is a pretty high level area, so be careful of the enemies because they will fuck you up. Um, and there's also a lot of high level loot here, but uh, I don't care about that right now. We just need to go up to the top of the mausoleum. Uh, in this dark area, there's a bunch of sanguine nobles. Um, they can throw daggers at you like that. So you might want to do a, a serpentine run, and now I have a dagger sticking out of my butt. That's <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, so grab the Sight of Grace. Uh, yeah, you better run away, bitch. But anyway, 
After you grab the Grace, keep heading up to the next area. You'll see a whole ton of Albinarix and the Sangre Noble. So if you come around the side here, uh, you won't aggro them. You're going to want to try to throw a throwing dagger at that pillar over there. Um, I missed and hit the wall in front of me. So the idea is that if you hit the pillar, then the Sanguine Noble investigates the noise at the pillar, and you can run up over here and open the chest and grab the Smithing Stone without him murdering you. Um, but I made it through just fine, and there's a set of grace nearby anyway. But yeah, so you can use that bad boy to upgrade the Fang to plus 10. That concludes the primary purpose of this video. Um, I also grabbed some bonus footage where we're going to go and grab the Bloodhound Knight armor at Mount Gelmir. So, uh, you know, just to finish off the cosplay, because we have the sword and the claws, uh, so I figured we'd go get the armor. So if you go past the Writheblood Ruins and follow the road to the west, this takes you into the Mount Gelmir area. Grab the Sites of Grace along the way, so there's one by the bridge there. You're gonna run past this area. There's a whole bunch of virgin abductors here. Um, that one almost grabbed me. Like, it missed me by like a foot. Climb up the obnoxiously long ladder, grab the Site of Grace by the graveyard, and then head north and go around to the west. This will take you over to the Mount Gelmir Hero's Grave. Once you're inside, head to the lava area. Um, you can hide in these little nooks on the side so you don't get hit by the chariot. And then there's a drop here. I like to jump into the corner and you see I landed there and I got hit by the chariot and I miraculously survived with like 10 health left. So that was pretty cool. But the idea is that I would have jumped from up where I was just a minute ago and I would have landed on this wooden beam down here. Um, so that's what I typically try to do but I got stuck on the corner there. Anyway, so come to this window here. This jump might be a little bit tricky, but it shouldn't be too hard to fall off. Uh, and then that takes you into this room. There's a Bloodhound Knight down there. So buff up and get ready to murder him. Then murder him. And he drops the Bloodhound Knight set. And congratulations, you can now be a Bloodhound Knight using the armor, the fang, and the claws that we picked up. And in fact, not only does his armor look cool as hell, but also the Fang and the Claws are a really good pairing of weapons. Um, I really love having a fast offhand weapon like the Claws, especially since they do 60 bleed buildup on hit. That really complements the bleed buildup that the Fang does. Anyway, so if you found that video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Feel free to leave any feedback or questions you have in the comments down below, and I'll catch you later.